Hello everyone, and thank you for joining our ICC 2021 webinar titled, How to Secure and Democratize OT Data in Your Brownfield Legacy Devices with Ignition Edge and Groove Epic. My name is Benson Hoagland, and I'm responsible for product strategy and marketing here at Opto22. And I'm pleased to introduce Garrick Reichert, our senior applications engineer, who is standing by to answer your questions in real time as we progress through this webinar. Simply post your questions in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, and Garrick will get to you as fast as he can. Thank you very much, Garrick. Now, I'm broadcasting live from Opto Demo Studios here at Opto 22 headquarters, and in this webinar, I'll be interacting with a lot of the equipment you see here on this screen to demonstrate how all of this works. And here's an aerial shot of our factory here in Temecula, California, which is about an hour north of San Diego. It's where we design, build, and support everything we make. Now, we're going to cover a lot of ground in the next 30 minutes, so buckle up. In fact, it's about 45 minutes worth of content squeezed into uh, 30 minutes. Naturally, with all of this content, you may want to revisit this webinar at a later date, so fear not. We are recording this session and we'll post a link to the ICC Attendify website once it's ready. Now, I'm very light on PowerPoint slides. In fact, only have a few to cover, you know, basically the, uh, an introduction to the Edge platform I'll be using to demonstrate these concepts. Then I'll jump into live mode where I'll present an architecture builder uh, to kind of show how the pieces and parts work together. Now, I'll also demonstrate Groove Epic's Groove Manage software and Ignition Edge running on the Epic to show you how those two products work together uh, to achieve the desired goal. And in my bonus round, time permitting, I'll introduce a brand new Ignition module developed by inductive certified uh, system integrator Avidyne out of Bakersfield, California. And that's going to let you use Ignition and MQTT to actually manage the cybersecurity and remote access features I'll be demoing. So you don't want to miss that. Okay, in short, Groove Epic is a hardware and software edge compute platform that combines into a single industrial backplane, a real-time controller with optional I.O., an operator interface for setting up the, uh, uh, the system without the need for a laptop or a PC, a rich suite of software tools including Ignition and Ignition Edge pre-installed, cybersecurity features out of the box, including user accounts, firewalls, certificate management, much more, and of course a secure gateway and remote access features like that provides things like zoning, conduits, and VPN access. I'll be describing all these in the demo. All of this, of course, is built on legendary Opto 22 quality, backed by some of the best warranties in the business. Now, from a hardware perspective, we're packed in quite a punch here. Uh, from hot swappable I.O. modules and numerous signal types to visual diagnostics and an onboard smartphone sized display, as I described a moment ago. Um, and the I.O. is optional. You can uh, obviously get this without, uh, without any I.O. modules just to use some of the gateway features. Uh, and that's where the chassis sizes come in. Lots of different options there, including a zero chassis. And it all comes back to a very powerful quad-core CPU with a real-time Linux OS, plenty of RAM to run all your software applications, and, of course, a power fail safe solid state drive with lots of you know gigabytes of storage available but most importantly this comes with multiple network interfaces that will lay the foundation for a secure edge computing platform for for your existing unsecure legacy PLCs and devices. Now, while the focus of this presentation will be around Groove Epic, we also offer the Groove Rio, an intelligent software configurable Ethernet IO edge device that also supports Ignition software. But that's a webinar for another time. Okay, so let's jump in. I'm gonna switch uh, my screen over and let's pull uh, my browser up for you here and we'll switch to there. And you should see a browser and of course my cooking cam here with an Epic that we'll be using. Uh, and the first thing I wanna do is go through this uh, architecture builder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this link. It's live on our website, so you can uh, visit this at a later time as well. And this is how I'm going to actually build out the system. So obviously we'll start with the mission and that is how do we get field devices, whether they're in the uh, remote field or on the plant floor, into Ignition SCADA while protecting uh, those systems that we want to connect to. The first thing we'll do, of course, is we'll deploy an Epic into the field. And the idea of the next thing we'll do is actually create an OT zone LAN. This is what we're going to call a trusted network. That means we know everybody and all the devices 
on that network. Now, this would be a private network with no exposure to the internet. It can't get out to the internet or to other networks and won't allow access in unless permitted specifically. Now, we'll put, go ahead and put the other devices on there. You may have some AB uh, PLC, in this case, uh, a Modbus TCP device. I'll show in my demo. And we have a nice uh, protected zone here. Uh, that we're going to use to ex uh, connect our existing brownfield devices. Then we'll use another Ethernet port that's on the device, a segmented Ethernet port, to connect to the IT LAN. Now, an IT LAN could be a cellular radio uh, network. It could be a plant floor IT LAN. Either one will work. The idea is that we're going to connect to that to gain access to other services uh, that may be available. And those services would include things like an MQTT broker, uh, VPN servers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it doesn't really matter where these servers exist. They can exist on your IT LAN. They can exist in the DMZ or even in the cloud. But we're going to be using a VPN server in this demo and also an MQTT broker. Both of these we'll, we'll be using as cloud uh, applications. So once we've made that connection, then we're going to uh, swing over and actually use Ignition software running on the Epic here, uh, running on the Epic to connect to the use the device connections to connect to the PLCs, configure MQTT transmission, which is a module on the edge side, to actually connect to that MQTT broker, uh, and we'll also use the designer there to collect the tags that we want to publish up to the broker. And that connection to the broker is outbound and persistent and it's uh, authenticated and encrypted. So we're talking about a completely secure connection with no firewall ports needing to be opened. Everything will be outbound, no inbound ports need to be opened for this to work. Then we'll flip over to the SCADA side and we'll do something similar on the Ignition, on Ignition SCADA. We'll use the MQTT engine module to actually connect to the same broker. Again, a TLS encrypted outbound connection up to the broker to subscribe to all the tags that are being produced from the secure OT zone over the IT LAN network. So we have a nice segmented, fully secure system for moving data around. Now the other cool thing is that once I have the data into Ignition, I can use all the services within Ignition to do interesting things with the data. I'm going to show you some perspective screens. I'll actually show you a third party OPC UA client making use of this data and much more. But the other thing that's cool is we have other software that also is MQTT aware. For example, the Canary Historian here. I can use the same kind of technology to make that outbound encrypted authenticated connection to the broker, pull all the tags into the historian, and start building some interesting applications there as well. Now, the beauty of this technology is it's decoupled. So I don't have to have the softwares I'm talking about communicate directly to the PLCs or devices in the OT zone. All of that is brokered and therefore decoupled. So this makes scaling the system very, very easy to millions of tags if necessary. And all the while, we've completely protected those uh, OT systems, uh, OT devices, PLCs, and so on that are largely uh, unsecure. And there's only one point port open in this system, and that's at the MQTT broker, port 8883, again, secure and encrypted. So it makes managing cybersecurity very simple as well. Now, you may also need to, you know, we're talking about closing all these ports, so how in the world would you actually get to the edge devices if you needed to? No worries, VPN to the rescue. Each of the uh, Groove Epic and Groove Rio devices support VPN clients, and they'll use the same methodology. They'll make an outbound connection to a VPN server, and in essence, by doing so, and we'll do this on demand from Ignition SCADA, we'll actually fire up the VPN, and then all those devices are now on their own virtual private network over the IT LAN network. Then the next step, of course, is, you know, we're all working from home, we're all uh, or maybe you're in the shop and you're uh, tying into one of your uh, customer applications and you need access to you know, Groove Epic or the Ignition Edge software, fire up the VPN client on your PC, connect into the same broker, or I'm sorry, into the same VPN server, and now all of those devices are on the same virtual private network. Now, there are going to be some rare cases where you actually need to try to gain access to some of these PLCs in the protected OT zone. No worries there. We have a feature in, uh, in the Epics called Port Redirect. Basically, this allows you to build conduits that may bridge, say, the virtual private network 
over to the OT network on a temporary basis and allow you to gain act, uh, access to those PLCs in the OT protected zone. Further, I'm going to show you how we can actually manage all these connections right from Ignition SCADA right down here. So in the end, you have a system that is a complete architecture. You have data flows established, cybersecurity in place, and of course, remote access features all ready to go. So now let's go ahead and see this actually in action. The first thing I want to do is I'll go ahead and come down here and load up the perspective. So Real quickly, I'm going to log on to this system here. This is Ignition SCADA. This is on a public web server at demo.groove.com. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, click on Perspective, and of course I have to log in. And this is a public site, and we, we will be offering these uh, user credentials so you can log in and see this all yourself. So the first thing I want to do is come over to uh, the first system. So I'm going to come over here and click on chapter 13 and focus on first my opto turbine demo. So I'm going to switch over to this screen so now below me you see the opto turbine demo behind me and I'm going to actually start pulling in a bunch of data from here that's all coming in over MQTT and Sparkplug B. So we'll come back to here and click on the opto turbine and there you have it. Very simple perspective screen but you can see I'm getting data from a remote OT protected zone uh, Allen Bradley data, Siemens S7 data. Let's take a closer look at what that looks like. So here's my demo behind me. I'm pulling the information into this screen that you can see. So I've got my turbine, I've got PLCs, but this is how everything is segmented. My PLCs here are on the private OT zone, as I described earlier, and bring it into the Epic, use the Ignition sof software to take that data and publish it on change to MQTT broker and then now on the SCADA side, uh, let me switch back my screen, I'm subscribed to that data and seeing everything in there. Now you also may remember that when I mentioned connecting from the edge up to the broker, I persist that connection. This allows data to flow back, back out to the edge. So for example, <clears throat> maybe I want to start my turbine. So I'll go ahead and click this button and there you go. You can see in the screen down below, I've actually initiated a command from the main SCADA to turn on the broker. I can also do some things to talk to the PLCs as well in the OT protected zone. For example, I may want to turn on my red stack light. There you see it come on. The other thing that should be evident is the performance. You see how fast I make an action or make a command and it actually occurs all the way out on the edge through the broker, all encrypted, all authenticated. So this is, you're not giving up performance to implement these cybersecurity features. So that's pretty slick. We'll also go ahead and turn on the Siemens green light and we're, we're in like Flynn. So works very, very well. Now I also mentioned in my previous screen that I could actually see some of this data on an OPC UA client, some third party client. So even though I'm using MQTC, I can still take advantage of my existing software. For example, I'm going to come in here and open up an OPC UA client, and I'm going to go ahead and log into there as well. Again, this is a public site, so we'll uh, log in with my trial and username, uh, Opto22, and there you can see it again. This is an OPC UA client, but taking advantage of all of that MQTT and cybersecure uh, environment. So here we'll go ahead and turn off the PLC, I mean, uh, turn off the turbine, uh, and we'll turn off the PLC stack lights as well. Uh, as you can see, works just, just as well as it did with the perspective, but we're just using OPC. Now one other one that's kind of cool is, uh, let's go ahead and bring in the next one. I'll start bringing in other data. So now this data will actually be from this device, this Epic that's sitting here next to me, and it's actually talking to these couple of PLCs over my shoulder. One's a Modbus TCP device, the other of course is the uh, AB PLC, uh, another AB PLC. So I'll switch back over to here and uh, go to back to my perspective screens, and once again, I'm getting some controller data, AB da data there, and also information from the SATEC power meter. Now, one of the cool things as well is we can actually use another piece of software, as I described earlier. If I go to my next chapter here, I'm, I talk, talked about the Canary Historian earlier. Its ability to go and subscribe to the same tags and do something interesting with that data. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Again, everything in the system is secure, so I need to log in. 
And I'll go ahead and do that. And as soon as I do, the Axiom dashboard from the Canary Labs historian is pulled up. And now I'm actually seeing trended data from all of the OT zones on a single pane of glass, including the, the opto turbine going turning on, all of the other data that's, uh, you know, stock prices and, and waveforms and processes and flows, all of it on a single pane of glass. So you can see where that using the MQTT architecture provides a lot of flexibility in what kinds of software that you're going to use. So the next thing I'm going to go is uh, we'll, we'll just break all this down to a single uh, configuration. I'll be using this device here next to me to show you how all the pieces actually come together. All right, so let's do that. The one thing I want to do is open up a new tab because what I'm going to do next is actually log into, uh, into my Epic and show you the configurations of both the Epic and the Ignition software. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, log in to the Epic itself. So I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see that the first thing I'm prompted with is a user account information. Indeed, all the Epics and Rios have user accounts. So to make sure that I know who's logged in and, and avoid anybody who doesn't have access from getting to these devices. But more importantly, before I actually want to log in and throw my password over the wire to get to the device, I want to confirm I have a secure TLS encrypted connection. And indeed I do. The beauty of modern browsers today is they let you know, hey, you're, you're on an encrypted channel so there's uh, no chance of man in the middle attacks so what I'm going to do next is actually sign in uh, and I'm going to sign in with this username and password and I'll show you that account in just a moment now when I log in uh, it should be noted that the way I'm doing this right now is I'm logging in from the IT LAN from the PC I'm actually presenting on uh, over the IT LAN into the Epic. So once again, I want to be very careful about what kind of access I'm going to allow. I want to make sure I have a valid user account, it's TLS encrypted, and the appropriate firewall ports are open and all others are closed. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, but if I wanted to, I could actually do a lot of this configuration directly from the front display. As you can see there, I'll pop up my Epic here, there's my front display. I can do a lot of these configurations if I was in the OT zone right from the display or hook another PC, use a mobile device or whatever. So a lot of options there but they're, they're basically the same configurations. Okay, I'll take that back off. I talked about accounts. Let's see what that looks like. So I go into accounts and I go into users. Now I logged in with a, my B. Hoagland account. That's an Active Directory account. Indeed, the Epics will support LDAP services like Active Directory so that I can actually manage user accounts and user access to these devices centrally from IT. So that's a really nice feature to have built in. But then we also support local user accounts as well, and those are noted here. Okay, the next step is, why, well, how did I create those two networks? So if I come back to my uh, system here, how did I create the OT zone and how did I create the IT zone? Uh, that's next in my network settings. So I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to go over to network and look at status. And there you can see I have two Ethernet connections created. One is on it with a static IP address in the private OT zone with a private non-routable um, IP address. And that simply means that anything on that network can't get to the internet and nothing from the internet or even the IT LAN can get to those devices unless we uh, make specific uh, rules for doing so, which I'll show you later. Uh, and then my Ethernet 1 connection is to my IT LAN but it's using DHCP and DNS and all of the other you know, wonderful IT services available for networking. But the most important configuration here is this one here at the bottom, the gateway address. Automatically provided by IT and it is the IP address, if you will, of the gateway or router that gets me to other networks, to the DMZ, to the cloud or whatever all ready to go uh, and, and built in. So let's take a look at closer what that looks like from a physical perspective. Here's my Epic again. I'll open up the front cover and you're gonna see two ethernet cables. The red one is my ethernet zero, which is my OT LAN, and it connects again to these PLCs and Modbus TCP device that's behind me. The other cable, this one here, is connected to my IT LAN. So the Epic is effectively segmenting or zoning those two networks completely apart and protecting those PLCs on the back end. 
So that's pretty slick. So that's uh, essentially the networking features uh, that we have set up. There's a lot more to it, but just for the uh, purposes of this uh, demonstration, wanted to show you some of the basic stuff on the network side. But there's one other thing that's really important here, and that is the firewall. There is a firewall built in for all the interfaces. So I can actually be very granular in what services I will expose to any given network interface. Simply said, on the IT land side, I want to be very careful to only permit connections to the Epic that are authenticated and encrypted. And indeed, the Groove Epic managed software is, so I will allow it on all ports. However, maybe the CodeSys controller, the real-time control engine that's running on this, you know, we, we don't want to allow access from the IT LAN or from any LAN that's not secure and encrypted. So you simply turn off that firewall port. All of these settings are, are built in. Now, of course, the Ignition Edge software, it does permit secure connections to Ignition Edge. So we'll allow that from the IT LAN ETH1 as we see here. So again, the firewall uh, settings are very important for making sure we're only allowing the appropriate access on secure channels. Okay. There's a lot more to, to Groove Epic than I could possibly cover in this, uh, in this webinar. So we're going to focus on the task at hand, and that's let's take a look at the Ignition software that's running on here. As you can see, it's completely built in. We've got all of it. We can, we've got Ignition Edge or Ignition, your choice. Uh, in this case, I am running Edge, and I'll go ahead and open up the Ignition Edge software. And as you can see, I can launch it right from uh, the same browser window. Uh, coming in here, we gotta make sure, again, we can log in. Remember, I'm on the IT LAN. I wanna make sure that I'm logging in with a secure username and password, and I have a secure connection to the Ignition Edge software, which indeed I do. Now I'm logged in. We'll jump over here to status. And remember when I was talking about those two uh, network zones and two IP addresses, indeed, Ignition Edge can, like a multi-home PC, Ignition Edge can see both of those. So it can reach the OT devices to grab the tags and then use the IT LAN interface to push that data out to the broker. So pretty slick there. Let's quickly talk about those device connections. Uh, so if I come into here, you can see I've got my AB PLC and my SATEC Modbus device. I'm going to click into configuration here because I want to show you uh, as we all know, the Allen Bradley driver is, is incredibly simple to use. I put in a name, I enable it, and I simply put in the IP address of the PLC. Note that that IP address, dot .52, is in that same OT zone uh, that's completely protected, non-routable. And then, of course, I have the port, which is the programming port, the Ethernet IP port, that I'm going to go uh, hit that device and pull the tags in from Ignition Edge. Very straightforward, all built into the system. Now that I have my device driver set up, now I want to actually configure MQTT. So I'm going to come down to MQTT transmission, and when this module is enabled, it will allow you to actually set up your encrypted TLS connections up to your servers. Now I mentioned that I'm using a, a cloud-based server. I happen to be using the HiveMQ cloud service. And one reason is because you can get a free account on HiveMQ up to 100 devices. So it's very affordable. So indeed, I'm using the HiveMQ cloud. I'm communicating on an SSL or TLS encrypted channel to a secure port, the only port open in the system. And I've got a username and password. And now I've got that connection over the OT, uh, IT LAN up to the broker and I can start sending data. Very straightforward. Uh, just a, a couple of quick click configurations and you're all set. But let's just say that, for example, on this system here, you might be using a cellular network for the, your IT LAN. And what if the cellular network goes down? Or what if the, o, the IT LAN goes down? You want to be able to store information right at the edge until uh, communications are resumed. So I'm going to come down here to MQTC transmission and click on history. And indeed, on history, I can see that I am storing data in the event of a, a network outage. I can store data to disk. So I'm going to be using all of, you know, some of that uh, gigabytes of storage on my SSD. And then when communications are resumed, I'll send all the data back up to the broker for SCADA, you know, a, uh, a, a remote host to actually pull that data in. And I won't lose any of my history tags uh, or anything. So uh, pretty powerful uh, there as well. Now, that's all about data democratization, getting the data where it needs to be, and I've protected all my zones. 
The next thing I want to talk about is some of that remote access. So if I come back here and I go to number 17 here, I want to talk about how we're going to do some of this remote access, uh, maybe spin up VPN tunnels, uh, and do the port redirects. Now I can come back into the Groove Epic and actually go to you know, my network, set up my VPN, uh, set up my port redirects so that I can make those, uh, create those conduits. And it's all perfectly valid. But maybe I want to actually manage that from Ignition. That's the beauty of this new Avidyne module. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to scroll down. I'm still on the edge. So I'm on Ignition Edge software. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and you'll see this new module called Opto22 Groove. If I click on General, there's my uh, main configuration. I'm simply, t it, this is all done through a RESTful API. So the Avidyne module just needs the credentials to hit the Groove Manage API. I can come down here to the bottom and click on Network. And again, I can enable and disable the VPN from the module. But what's important here is everything I'm doing here on the edge also gets published via MQTT for my SCADA host to be able to interact with these, uh, these configurations. And the last configuration, very quickly, is my rules, my conduits. These are my port redirect rules. So for example, if I want to hit the programming port on the ADPLC, I'll create a rule for that. If I want to just hit the, the web interface, the port, you know, the little web server that's on my ABPLC, which is unsecure, I can actually create a rule for that as well. Let's take a closer look because this is the one I'm going to demonstrate. I've got my uh, rule here that's saying I will uh, accept traffic on the IT LAN on this port and I'll redirect it over to the PLC to its port 80, which is the web server port. And that will be, of course, on the OT LAN as indicated here. Now you can see it's false, and I could enable it here at the edge, but I want to do all this from Ignition SCADA. Let's see how that works. I'm going to swing back over here to my perspective screen, and this bottom button here is called Remote Access. Now normally, this would be behind a, uh, user a another user authentication to only give the appropriate personnel rights to do this. Uh, right now I've given it to uh, this user, so there you go. I've got a screen now that allows me to actually manage uh, the VPN and the port redirects from SCADA. So I'm actually again on this device here down on the gateway using a perspective um, screen to manage all of these connections. So let's come back and let's test it out. The first thing I want to do is you can see down here at the bottom, this is for my Epic LC Studio, which is right here. And if I want to get to that web server, I need to check this box. But I'm not going to do it yet because I want to prove to you that I'm not making this stuff up. So I'm going to come over here to LC Studio, click into AB Web Server, and it's going to time out. So uh, obviously this doesn't work because I haven't enabled it yet from SCADA. So let's go ahead and enable it. So I'll come in here and I'll say, I want to let the IT LAN access the web uh, PLC, uh, the web server on the PLC. I swing back to here and it's saying it can't, and there it goes. Suddenly it pops up. So now I'm actually communicating to a uh, AB PLC in the private OT zone, but here's what's even better. I'm actually going to be able to alarm and historize all of this. So now I have an audit trail, I have it in my alarm panel, uh, and anything else that I do with the, the same thing, let's say I want to allow access to the programming port and I need to enable the VPN, I've done all that and I have it show up here again in my alarm. So I always know the status of the system even for systems like this. So very exciting, lots of, lots of power in there and I've run out of time, so I'm, I'm gonna close this guy up. Okay, so thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate your attention. Thank you so much.